Congresswoman, thank you so much for joining Balance of Power. I want to get right to it about science. You define science in Congress. How quickly can you turn around the anti-science that we saw of the last four years? Thank you for having me. And I think that that's a really critical and important question. And I'm grateful to see this administration has moved out rapidly on that exact conversation. And you've seen as recently as the last piece that you, you let in with uh, a new uh, announcement from Johnson & Johnson that was met with open arms and excitement by this administration. I had the opportunity to be briefed yesterday. Uh, the Congress was by Dr. Fauci, amongst others, and had a little bit of a sneak preview into that. Uh, and I'm really excited that we were having these conversations about issues of uh, innovation, issues of science, and issues of technology, because those are the things that will lead us into the future and lead us out of this COVID pandemic that we're experiencing right now. Congresswoman Houlihan, you know that Washington has let small business down. We see it up here in Manhattan. Emily Wilkins sees it in Washington. Our audience sees it and listens to it nationwide at every moment. What is a prescription to actually jumpstart small business, get them through this crisis, and then move on from there? So you're right. You know, we have let the, the small business community down. 100,000 businesses in May alone were shuttered for good uh, in our country and, and never probably to open again. And so it is our responsibility to elevate the importance of the small business community because 99.7% of all businesses are small businesses in our country. Uh, it's one of the reasons why I chose to be on the Small Business Committee in Congress, which is historically one that people don't stay on long term, but I've asked to be on it in my second term because I'm an entrepreneur and an innovator and an engineer myself. And I believe the power of us responding to this pandemic comes in the form of small businesses and the power of uh, our, our offices is responsible to making sure we're delivering for them. It's why I introduced my very first bill of the 117th Congress this week, which is called the Ramp for Innovators Act. It's exactly what it sounds like. It's an on-ramp for innovators to be able to have better access, quicker access uh, to funding, to seed capital right. that comes from the SBIR and the STTR. Mm -hmm. Congressman, I also wanted to ask a little bit, you know, right now, small businesses are suffering, startups are suffering. Does anything need to be done specifically in any upcoming stimulus bill to make sure that these two groups are being taken care of? What do they need in the short term? So in the short term, you've seen some uh, some beginnings of responses in the form of the Paycheck Protection Program uh, program. You've seen it in IDLE, the Emergency Disaster Loan Program. You've seen us in subsequent um, uh, efforts and tranches in, in our COVID response, working down, making sure that we're getting to those phase zero businesses, those zero and one employee businesses, uh, those startup businesses, those women and minority and veteran owned businesses to make sure that we're finding everybody where they are and we're elevating them during this pandemic. Uh, but it also is also looking towards the future and making sure that we're providing better on ramps for people so that when we're coming out of this pandemic, we're creating millions of companies, not just millions of jobs that allow us to be able to scale rapidly and create jobs uh, for the future economy. You use the term on ramps. Can you dive into that a little bit more? I mean, what is exactly preventing someone who wants to start a small business or start a startup from doing so at this point? Like what additional things are needed besides someone just having the will to do so? Of course, you know, I mentioned that I come out of the entrepreneurial world, world and my job primarily has been as an operator. Uh, I'm the person who comes in when the idea has been had and helps to commercialize it and execute on it. And those are some of the things that are most difficult to do. Many people have very good ideas, but if they don't have access to capital when they need it, and if they don't have help in commercializing and optimizing their idea, they probably won't succeed. And that's exactly what this program is trying to do, this on-ramp for people able to be able to use the capital, but also the expertise to be able to commercialize mm -hmm. and to be able to have patent control that is necessary for us to be able to be competitive. Uh, good morning and uh, good afternoon. Balance of power on radio and television. Markets deteriorating negative 600 uh, right now on the Dow, just below 30,000. We'll have much more GameStop and that crew pretty much stable here right now. Captain Houlihan, I've got to ask a question, and you are qualified. Politicians love to walk the walk, talk the talk. You did it. You were in the Air Force uh, up at Hanscom outside Boston. How's the Pentagon doing, and how does the Pentagon adapt and adjust to this new administration? 
It's a great question. My job when I was up at Hanscom Air Force Base is, is very relevant to this conversation. It was about trying to figure out what the future programs that we needed to create to address future threats were. Uh, and we need as a, as a military to be much more innovative, to be much more uh, quick and agile than we have been historically. And so I did have the opportunity to have a conversation with some of the new folks in the Air Force, particularly in this administration, about that exact issue of how can we be more flexible? How can we be more agile and dynamic? Uh, how can we be better in thinking about our workforce uh, to be able to encourage more people who have, as an example, engineering backgrounds for, for uh, to pursue careers in the, in the military and in uniform? So I'm hopeful that this administration gets it because that conversation certainly was one that uh, was headed in the right direction. They've got a secretary of defense who clearly gets it with an exceptional uh, pedigree as well. Explain to our audience on radio and television how a Secretary of Defense affects policy change? Well, you've already seen it in the very few days since he's taken uh, the, the oath. You know, Secretary Austin has already talked about issues that are um, important to military members, whether it's recruitment or retention, whether it's sexual abuse and assault. All of those kinds of things matter to the uh, the eff efficacy of the military and the morale of the military. And there's definitely a lot of work that needs to be done uh, in that area. And so a member such as uh, Secretary Austin, who talks the talk and walks the walk, is somebody that we can uh, be very excited about and look forward very much to his service in this particularly new way. Congresswoman, I do want to touch very quickly on what we've seen happen in the markets this past week. You know, Democrats, they've only got the House and the Senate. It's only guaranteed for them for the next two years. I know you guys have a lot of priorities you want to push through. Does Wall Street now join that list of priorities, things that you need to address in the next two years, or are other things still more important? Well, I think that uh, as we have, at least I have constantly said the market is certainly an indicator of something, but it's not necessarily an indicator of what everybody is experiencing in this economy. We have only to look at what happened during the pandemic to understand just how fragile everybody's lives are and how close to bankruptcy so many people are. So while I do very much care, you know, where the stock market is going and very much hope that the financial services uh, committees in, in the Senate and the House are looking at this particular issue that GameStop ha Stop has brought forward, I really do hope that we stay focused on with our eyes on the prize on the vast, vast majority of the people in our economy who are not invested in the stock market and who are struggling to get through this pandemic and that we focus mm -hmm. on the small businesses as well as we started the conversation to make sure that we're well, bringing back, breathing back life into our economy. We are out of time. Chrissy Holland, thank you so much. The Congresswoman from the 6th District of Pennsylvania.